Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm going to be doing a Try a Chapter Challenge for Trans Girl April. Um, I am so excited about Trans Girl April, and I have a TBR up, which I will link down below if you want to check that out, of five books that I for sure want to get to. But I also have a ton of other books checked out from the library. Um, I actually have nine physical books checked out, and I thought it would be fun to do try a chapter to kind of see how I'm feeling, what I'm in the mood for, what's appealing to me the most right now so that I can rank them and prioritize them so that over the course of April, as I'm reaching for books, I know which one of these I want to kind of pick up first and, and try to get through. So I have quite a few different things, and I will just check in with you over the next couple of days as I read a chapter in each of them. I'll probably check in every three books or so and tell you what I'm thinking and kind of how I'm feeling about them. Okay, so I've had a chance to go ahead and read the first few books. I decided to only read the first 10 pages of each book because I look through and some of them have quite long chapters. Um, but I feel like 10 pages is a good amount to get a feel for what a book is like. So the first few that I picked up start with a couple that are actually recommendations from Kevy at Say Kevy, who's one of the hosts of Trans Girl April. And I'll have all the information about that readathon below. Um, and so I've been wanting to pick these up because she just had such great things to say about them. So the first one that I picked up is Little Blue Encyclopedia for Vivian by Hazel Jane Planty. So this is a novel about grief and about kind of memory and memorializing somebody. Um, it's about a trans woman whose best friend, another trans woman, passed away um, and her mourning and her grief um, for the loss of that friend and going through that friend's belongings and also um, through a TV series that they liked called Little Blue. Um, and it just sounds like it's going to be really about emotions, about grieving, about love. Um, and each of the chapters, other than the kind of intro chapter, seems to be like an alphabet thing. So A is for, B is for, and ABC Darien, I think. Um, and I really liked the feel of it. It's kind of um, a little bit melancholy, but just really also beautiful. And I love stories about grief. So I very much enjoyed the beginning of this one. The next, the other um, book that Kevi had recommended is There Are Trans People Here by H. Melt. This is a collection of poems that are just kind of talking about the trans experience. And I have a lot of overlap with Kevi in terms of what we both like in terms of poetry. And the, the poems in this were just so working for me. I loved these poems. Um, just poems talking about things like, you know, going into intensive care or dealing with doctors or nurses or dealing with wanting certain surgeries or whatever, right? So those are some of the first ones. Um, but also just things like kind of friendship and the way that people support each other, the community has a real community feel to these poems. Uh, and I'm just really liking the way that they're laid out and the way that the wording is done. So I very much enjoyed the first few poems in this. And then the other book that I picked up is, I'm not sure how I heard about this, but this is a memoir that I've had on my TBR for a while. Um, I think it's a YA memoir, actually. It's called Unicorn by uh, Amro Al-Qadi, who is um, an Iraqi immigrant to the UK. Um, and this is sort of about 
their experience being non-binary and Muslim and a drag queen um, and how they kind of reconcile that with their family, with their background, with their religion, all those sorts of things. And it's got a lot of humor. So I just kind of read the first 10 pages, which is the introduction. And already it like made me laugh quite a bit. So I'm liking the tone of this and I'm very interested in what their experiences are. Also, sorry for the glare. Um, these are library books. They're very, very shiny. So yeah, the first three books that I picked up, all of them were really great. So we'll see how going through the rest of them um, over the next couple of days pans out and if I'm even able to rank and prioritize because maybe I just want to read everything. Okay, so I have read from three more books, so I wanted to check in with you about what I've been thinking of them so far. So the first is The Gods of Tango by Carolina de Robertes. Um, I love Carolina de Robertes' other book, Cantoras. It's absolutely beautiful. And this one is a historical fiction set in the early 1900s in Argentina about an Italian woman who moves there um, expecting to get married to a guy, except it turns out that he is no longer alive and she has to figure out what to do with herself. Um, and she ends up taking up playing violin in a tango band, um, but she has to, you know, pretend to be a man in order to be able to play in that band and kind of finds that her identity um, is shifting as she does that. So I absolutely loved the first um, 10 pages of this. It was just that beautiful writing that Carolina de Robertes has. It's just so immersive. Um, I really like the perspective of the main character, Leda, and just the, the way that you feel immersed in this time period and the hopes and the dreams of the characters. Um, the beginning is just her on the ship as she's arriving in Buenos Aires. And yeah, so I loved the beginning of this. Then the next book that I picked up is The 30 Names of Night by Zane Jokadar. So I have recently tried to read, but stopped reading um, The Map of Salt and Stars, which was his first novel, uh, but it was a little bit too intense, too heavy, and too graphic. Um, it follows a family of Syrian refugees and like lots of stuff happens to them. Um, but I wanted to give his work another shot and I'd heard good things about this one. This is um, a contemporary with some sort of fabulous elements where there is a trans man who is dealing with grief over the loss of his mother from a number of years before and things start happening that um, seem very strange and confusing uh, and he's trying to figure all of that out figure out how it's connected to his mom and also regain his ability to make art this starts though pretty heavy again um, with some graphic scenes there's all of these birds that are dying and it's just a little graphic in the beginning um, as well as heavy as we're going and you know he's this uh, painter he's this artist and he goes to the Met to view images and there's just all of this stuff about the way that um, you know, especially women's bodies are objectified and he goes to the doctor and the doctor is being very difficult. And so I think this one 
has quite a bit of heavy content as well. So I might be in the mood for this, but I'll, I'll have to make sure that I am if I pick it up. And then the other one that I did was King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. So this is a middle grade. I have uh, read Case and Calendar's Hurricane Child before, and I really, really enjoyed Hurricane Child. It's such a sweet story. So I've been meaning to read more of their work. And this one is about a boy in Louisiana who is grieving over the loss of his older brother um, and also just dealing with sort of the the racism and other things that are going on in his community as well as his family's grief um, but he believes that his brother has sort of been reincarnated as a dragonfly uh, and he hears his brother talk to him in dreams I love the writing in this it's really really nice it does have a little bit of heavier content in this even in just the first few pages we're kind of introduced to another boy who is sort of a white supremacist and was majorly involved in like death threats to his brother and um, all sorts of other things so there's quite some heavy content in this as well but the gentleness of the writing is mitigating that a bit for me so I'm definitely interested in this one too and because it's middle grade it would go so quickly to read so that's where I am so far in the books and I will check in with you again once I read the last three uh, first 10 pages. Okay, so I have read the first 10 pages of the last three books that were kind of on my pile and I wanted to tell you what I thought of them. So the first is The Merry Spinster Tales of Everyday Horror by Daniel M. Lavery, um, although this was published under his previous name. This is a book that I have been wanting to read for quite a while because um, Lavery's text from Jane Eyre is one of my absolute favorite books. It is just, it's so ridiculous. I love the humor style. So I've been meaning to pick this book up for a while um, and I loved the first few pages of it. So I just read half of the first story and it's a Little Mermaid retelling. These are kind of just retellings of different fairy tales. Um, and I just love the humor style. I love the way that he just takes little twists on things. Love the characterization of the mermaid. Love, yeah, so it's a little bit um, kind of satirical in times and I just really really got along with this so I loved that. Then I picked up uh, The Genesis of Misery by Neon Yang and this is um, I think like a, a sci-fi book that also is a little bit of a Joan of Arc retelling type of thing. Um, I've heard kind of mixed reviews of this but I wanted to give it a try because I really liked Neon Yang's The Tensor series so I started this and it is a little dense so the world building is pretty epic feeling in the first you know kind of prologue area um, but it also was a little hard for me to keep focusing and feeling engaged in the story because it is a little bit of, of dense writing and so I kind of had to keep refocusing. So this one I think could be really interesting but I have to be like in a very aware mental space in order to pick it up. 
Then I picked up The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick, which is a pen name for the writing duo of Marie Brennan and Alec Helms. Alec Helms is non-binary. Um, and this is a book that I've heard so many things about from Angela at Literature Science Alliance, who I'll link below. Uh, she absolutely loves this series. So I've been meaning to pick it up for a while, um, but I, you can see it's pretty chunky. Um, so I've needed to have a little bit of reading space for it. The first kind of prologue in this is um, a little violent. So the world building actually feels pretty interesting and the characters um, that we start with at least are very engaging, but it's quite a violent sounding world. Um, we start with two kids who are basically, I think, thieves um, and the person who kind of runs their thief den is really really brutal and ends up killing one of their friends and is clearly abusing them and then yeah all sorts of stuff happens so it's quite violent to start with um, but the writing is good as well so I think that this might be an engaging read if I'm up to the violence or if it's less violent throughout the rest of it uh, but yeah that's kind of how I'm feeling about this one right now so that is what I thought of these three books. Let me go get all of the books and tell you sort of how I'm going to rank them based on my mood today. Okay, so I've got all of my books now, and I think that all of these books had actually really great writing. All of them were things that I was intrigued by as soon as I picked them up, but some of them are a little bit heavier, and right now I'm feeling my mood is kind of in the lighter, funnier space. So really this is a ranking of what felt a little heavier to me to what felt lighter. Um, and I have no idea what order I'll actually pick these up in because they were all very good. Um, but based on my mood today, I think that the bottom of my list is the 30 names of night just because there was a bit of like graphicness to that and that's always a little harder for me to handle but i also think the themes in this one would be really interesting and i really do want to give zane chokodar another try then we've got um the mask of mirrors again there's just a bit of violence that has to be something that i'm in the mood for but i thought that the characters were super engaging i know angela loves it i think the world building might be really cool then i've got the Genesis of Misery. Um, this, I think the world building was so interesting just to start with. And that's one of the things I think Neon Yang does so well. So I'm very intrigued by this story, uh, but I have to be in a slightly more aware mood than I am today in order to be able to process all of the details of that because it was a little dense. Then I've got uh, King and the Dragonflies. I thought that the writing in this was so lovely. It is gonna tackle some heavier topics, um, but I thought that the writing was gentle enough to kind of get through those, and a middle grade always just reads really fast. So this one I think I will probably end up picking up. Then I've got the Little Blue Encyclopedia for Vivian. This one, I thought the, the writing was just really beautiful. It's a little bit melancholy, but it also has this touch of whimsy in the way that it's um, got these kind of uh, random little items and facts and things like that. So that was definitely appealing to me in this, and it's also quite a slim volume, so it wouldn't take that long to read. Then I've got There Are Trans People Here. Uh, I loved this poetry. It does tackle some heavier topics, but it was so easy to read. So I think I would really love to just pick up a couple poems a day and get through this. It would be so good. Then I've got The Gods of Tango. Um, I just, I love Carolina de Robertis' writing. This is immediately something that I was immersed in. I cared about the characters. I wanted to know what was happening. Um, and it might have some slightly heavier content, but it just really gripped me. And I think that I will love this so much. Then I've got Unicorn. Um, this is really just so funny in the, in the um, kind of intro prologue area uh, and I love memoirs so much so getting to read about this kind of drag queen's journey and their really explorations of their identity is just my thing plus the humor I think will really work for me and then uh, kind of top of my list is the Mary Spinster because I was so amused by this I was laughing I thought it was just hilarious Hilarious, and I love fairy tale and mythology retellings so I think this is just my mood right now and I've been wanting to read this for years anyway so I think this is the top of my list 
So that's kind of my ranking today of these books, but I really think that given a different day, I might pick up a different thing, different order, so who knows what I will actually do. But it has given me a chance to understand what mood I will want to be in to pick up which book, so that was really helpful for me. In any case, if you guys have read any of these, if you have any thoughts on, oh, you should definitely prioritize this one over that one, um, if you're interested in reading these two, anything at all, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. And I hope that you enjoyed the clips that I included of just kind of nature around here. Spring is just starting. It's really lovely. I love all the seasons, um, but I kind of took some clips while I was out for a walk this morning and of some of the sakura that are blooming in our nature neighborhood and it's just lovely and I hope that your spring is going well or if you're on a different part of the globe that I guess your fall is going well and beautiful as well.